Thanks for checking out this movie review. This is for the 2014 film Wolf Cop, a horror comedy, and let's dig into this one. Uh, when I watched this, it was on the Shutter streaming service, and it's in there two ways. It's the regular movie, and it's with the Joe Bob Last Drive-In treatment. So choose what you would like. Uh, written and directed by Lowell Dean, uh, who also did films 13 Eerie, Super Grid, Deadlands, and another Wolf Cop, yes, because there was a sequel to this, which I have not seen yet. Uh, I don't even know if I will. I like Wolf Cop enough to watch it here and there, but I don't love this film. Uh, one of the big reasons being, I want more comedy from this. You know, it's a horror comedy, and I just want more comedy to it, but that's just one of my issues. I'll, I'll continue. Uh, I love the fact that they did commit to uh, practical effects in this film. That is one of the most impressive things about it. That's something that you'll find if you're doing research about the film is very prominent, is people saying, look, they committed to practical effects, no CGI. That is a wonderful thing. And for that reason, the things like the wolf transformation look way better than they probably would with CGI. And the gore, all that stuff just looks better. And one of my favorite scenes, which I'll talk about later, they filmed in Saskatchewan, Canada, and the soundtrack is done by a band from Saskatchewan called Shooting Guns. And I do have to say that one of the strongest things about this film, in my opinion, is the soundtrack. The soundtrack is really good. Shooting Guns did a really good job with the music. And it's because it keeps it, like, it gets you fired up. It's kind of badass music. It keeps things upbeat. And I think it jives really well with the kind of mix of comedy and action that this film has. So, soundtrack is perfect for this film. I think it works exceptionally well. For, this is the first film from the Cinecoop Film Accelerator, which basically was trying to find films that, you know, otherwise wouldn't get any funding and, you know, give them money. So they gave $1 million to Lowell Dean to make this film because he was the first winner of this. I don't know if they've continued doing it. I assume they probably did some more, but I needed to, I should have checked into that. But um, yeah, I'm going to look into that and then maybe I'll do reviews on some of those other films if it's still a thing. The outside of the police station in this film was actually an old hamburger restaurant, uh, so I thought that was kind of funny. Knowing that going into watching this film again, um, I just kind of chuckled to myself when I saw the outside of the sheriff's building because I was just like, yep, burger joint. I think that's kind of funny. But hey, you know, you work with what you have. Sarah Lind in this film used a body double for that infamous interspecies sex scene between her and the wolf cop, um, which in my opinion, is shot relatively well for what you would assume it's going to be if someone just tells you about it. Um, people would think it'd be weird and everything. I thought they did a pretty good job shooting it, although I think maybe it's a little bit too long for what it is. Um, they handled it well. They made it seem human and not as weird as it could have been, in my opinion. Also, I love the fact that they put the song Moonlight Desires by Gowan behind that. Uh, it worked obviously very well because it's called Moonlight Desires and it's a werewolf having sex. I mean, the comedy in that is wonderful itself. Plus, that Gowan song is actually really good. 80s, I love 80s music. So, um, Like I was talking about the soundtrack being really good, it engages you immediately in the film and it gets you pumped up, it gets you jazzed, it pulls you into the film. Very fun and engaging and I love it. It's I wrote down it's rockin', it's a rockin' soundtrack. Uh, the beginning mon montage is giving you pieces of what's actually going on in the bigger picture of the film, but it doesn't give you the context so that you can really figure out what is happening. I mean, you're seeing this occult stuff, you're seeing the pentagram, you're seeing like hooded figures, you know, you're seeing a lot of the pieces, but you don't really know what it is. It's just looking like jumble to you at that point. But I kind of like that, you know, they're throwing some puzzle pieces at you early on, and then if you watch the film a second time, when you see that montage, you're just kind of like, ah, yes, and this is, you know, tied to this, and this is this, and I like those types of things where it's kind of like, we'll give you some clues, but you're not going to have enough context to really know what's going on. I think that's cool. Uh, Lou is painted as a big-time loser since she's such a bumbling idiot, and already drinking first thing in the morning, as soon as you meet his character, you meet him getting out of bed, and then he's slamming booze, and even drops his service weapon when he's going out to his car under the car 
So uh, everything says bumbling moron not to be taken seriously with this film for that character. And that ends up playing into the mythology that you find out at the library later where he looks up and it said it was like basically like a town idiot who ends up being turned into the werewolf and then they um, sacrifice him and, you know, drink his blood and, you know, live longer, these shape shifters, which I think that's one of the things I don't like. It's a little, I'll talk about that later, but that it's a little much. It's a little much. As soon as the piggies are talked about in this, you know, the guys who wear the pig masks and are doing robberies in town, as soon as they're talked about, I, I just see, and I know a lot of other people do, you just see the big bad wolf, three little piggies jokes coming on the way. Um, you're just like, that checks in the mail. I know it for sure. And that's one of my things about the overall comedy in the film, saying that I want more comedy. I also want a different comedy to a degree. Um, I'm fine with like a wolf related joke here or there, but it felt like they went for so many wolf specific jokes throughout the film that early on I was already kind of a little bit sick of it. There's still a lot of fun there in, you know, the violence with the film and, you know, some of the comedy coming from specifically the character Willie, but a lot of the, the wolf derived humor I don't really appreciate so much. It's It's just too much. It's it's too easy. That's the low-hanging fruit. And I, you know, when I'm watching a comedy, especially a horror comedy, I don't want the low-hanging fruit. I want something different. I want something funnier. Um, Willie in this seems kind of out there. So the idea of the occult that he ends up bringing up to Lou early on in the film, I, I feel like the audience kind of just like writes that off as, you know, this guy's just like this, the, the local conspiracy theorist, wacko dude looking for Bigfoot and all sorts of wacky stuff like that. So it gets kind of dismissed, I think, by the audience um, to be brought back later as a serious thing. And then the audience is like, oh, this Willie guy is actually knows what he's talking about. He's in the know. And then you find out much later, oh, it's because he's in on this whole thing. And he's actually guiding Lou through all the steps that they need to be taken up until this eclipse so that they can sacrifice him and drink his blood and blah, blah, blah. And I like the, the character of Willie. Willie's probably my... Yeah, he is. Uh, Willie's my favorite character in the film. I'm, I'm sure he's a lot of people's favorite character because he's the one who injects the most humor to the film. I like how the sheriff knows that Lou is loaded on the job and doesn't actually do anything about it, doesn't seem to care. Now, initially, that seems really weird and maybe like a plot hole, just like there's this is so unrealistic, there's no way that the sheriff would know this about this guy and allow him to keep working there. But... When you find out later that he's actually one of the shapeshifters, then it makes sense and you're like, oh, okay, that's why. Because he doesn't actually care because he's one of these shapeshifters and he's in on the plan. So, all good. It is odd that Lou isn't alarmed when he wakes up after being knocked out and then he has a pentagram um, carved into his chest. Like, he looks at it and he's perplexed by it, but he's not alarmed at all. And he just kind of like covers it up and then he goes to work. So it, it's very weird that he doesn't react more strongly to it. So I think that's something that kind of got me about the film. Kind of took me out and I'm like, very unrealistic. Even though, you know, all the events are really unrealistic. But for the world that was set up, he would freak out to some degree. The guy putting his donut on the dead body. Really, that is a good joke. That's one of the really good jokes in this film, uh, that one police officer, when they find the first dead body and he has his coffee, he puts it between the dead body's legs and he puts the donut on his leg and then picks it up and eats it. Very funny. I, I love that type of humor. Also, later, when they're checking out the bathroom scene where Lou changed into the um, werewolf for the first time and killed one guy, I believe, at that point... Uh, <laughs> He is just eating a sandwich while he's, you know, going around this this really disgusting, over-the-top crime scene. And uh, I found that a good follow-up joke to the donut. So I like that type of stuff. The partial werewolf transformation is pretty gnarly, especially the whole wolf penis that pops through. And you're not expecting that the first time you see it. So it's pretty shocking and you're just like, wow, they just went there. No one else has ever gone there, so I, I think that's funny. Um, but then later you get even more of a transformation in the jail cell the second time that he turns, 
and I think between the two, you get a really satisfying werewolf, full werewolf transformation for the most part. And that, once again, is where it comes back to the practical effects commitment being so great for the film. My hat's off to you on that one, little Dean. Willie fills the important role of guiding Lou through his new life as a werewolf. At first, I thought, you know, the first time I ever saw this film, I thought it was just, a, you know for the plot to kind of move him along as this friend and he was an important part of the story but then i realized oh he was part of the evil plan so that became even more fun wolf cop making a custom car is very unnecessary in this film but it is a good time for them to kind of like kick in the more rocking part of the soundtrack so i like that aspect of it but the whole thing of him just like you know pimping out this wolf car a little, you know, I don't, I don't really need it. I mean, even if it happened though, I think it'd be better to just like make it a lot quicker, uh, and then just get right to it. I feel like they spent a little too much time on it for me personally, although I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who'd be like, I actually love that part of it, but the music during it, like I was saying during the fight in the barn, the face rip is great especially when the guy is still alive after that and he's running around yelling and it's literally the skull face dude just yelling um that's probably my favorite part of the film when he just like grabs the guy's face and rips it right off and it's the exposed skeleton love that that is the best practical effects part of the film even though i was talking about the transformation being good the face rip is the best uh, i already talked about that there's a sex scene uh, it kind of sucks when you find out that Willie is on the occult, uh, is involved in this occult cons conspiracy, because you really liked him as an audience member. You're just like, oh, this guy's cool. He's on our side as an audience member, because you're all for Wolf Cop as an audience member, and Willie's on our side, and he's funny, and he's cool, and he means well. And then you find out he doesn't actually mean well, so it's kind of this moment of like, man, let me down. The shape-shifting aspect of the film comes out of left field, insane left field, and the lizard people part is that next step too far. You know, I thought the shape-shifting aspect of it, I could do without, but okay. But then that they're like lizard people, that's that next step that's, that's way too much. And it, it just makes it seem way too ridiculous. I don't need it. It distracts from a lot of the other stuff that's actually going on, and it's just very unnecessary. I don't like that aspect of it at all. I don't really like the shape-shifting aspect, and I really don't like the lizard people aspect of it. It's just, it's too much. You know, step it back. Put in more comedy instead. You can tell they shot the part, uh, the part at the end in the woods in broad daylight. That big fight in the end in the woods during the eclipse. You can tell they shot that in broad daylight and then in post. They change the hue of the film, and it doesn't look good. It really does not look good. Because one of the things I was seeing a lot with that is that the faces of the characters became unnecessarily dark, and it just it just doesn't look good. It, it would have been a lot better if you just either shoot it in the evening or just don't have it be during an eclipse or have it be indoors, you know, like... It can be during an eclipse, but the eclipse can be happening outside. They could be inside. You know, it's just, it, it was a bad idea. I mean, really what I'm getting to is it was a bad idea to shoot it during the daylight and then change the hue of, of the actual visuals. Uh, it looks terrible. It looks really terrible. Um, okay, so that brings me to some other, my final, like, wrapping up things. The acting in this is okay, which... If it's not great acting, it's fine if it's comedic, especially if it's like horror comedy. So the fact that the acting's not great is pretty excusable. You know, you can definitely get past that pretty easily. The directing and cinematography is okay. It's not that polished. You can tell that this person, that the people involved haven't done a ton of film. That's fine for being like a lower budget, independent type thing. But you definitely know that like this isn't a a big budget ordeal except for the you know sp the practical effects would indicate to you and like i said impressive so the film refers to liquor donuts so much that i want some i i found myself thinking about eating donuts and thinking to myself how do i get these liquor donuts 
I would love to have some boozy donuts. That sounds really amazing right now. So they did a good job just driving home liquor donuts in the film. I will say that. Um, and like I said at the end, I do want more comedy and I want less wolf related comedy. It was too much. It was too on the nose. It was too over the top with that. But overall, it's fun enough. I enjoy it. Like I said, I'm, I'm down to watch this film every now and then. Um, it's fun. Um, so out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give this a three star rating. I really can't go any higher than that. I was between a two and a half and a three, but I think the, the practical effects bumps it to that three. So Three star rating for Wolf Cop. Now, it's your turn to let me know your feelings on Wolf Cop. So put some comments down there. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you in between? I'm, you know, obviously kind of in between on it, but um, I would appreciate hearing from you guys on that. Also, do me a quick favor. If you like anything I've done, this video or any other video, please, please, please hit that subscribe button because that is your way to repay me. I 100% look at that as a transaction, as you saying, I, I enjoy what you do. This is what I can do for you. And I see every single person who subscribes. I get an email notification and I look at that subscriber's name and their picture and say, thank you to myself. You know, I don't say it to them, but I, but I say to myself when I see it, thank you. That, that is really cool. And it motivates me. It keeps me going with this because I'm not, you know, I'm not doing this for money or anything. It's a hobby. So um, it keeps me, me motivated and, and it lets me know that people are actually out there appreciating this stuff. So helps a lot uh, also hit the notification bell if you do do that or if you already have uh, because then that way it lets you know whenever I put up a new review or an unboxing or I'm doing a live stream because I do those and they're fun so you should check those out anyway thanks for checking this out and until next time keep it brutal